Okay. Whoopsie. Whoopsie, whoopsie. Whoopsie, whoopsie, what? Here comes. Put it into one of the long spaces. There we go. All right. Cool. What's up, y'all? <laughs> I was just remembering in uh, Independence Day, he's like, oops. Again, but without the oops this time. Yeah, without the oops. Good movie. I wonder if that movie still feels good today. No, it doesn't. It, it doesn't the CGI up. is so bad. <laughs> like it literally Lego. looks like they built like a Lego set and shot like a green light through it. It's so bad today. You're like, really? Yeah. It's still funny. Like the movie itself is still good, but the CGI is just awful. Yeah. Okay. Well, what's up, everybody? Uh, if you can hear us and see us, give us a shout. Hit some likes and hearts and all the tings. Let us know you're out there. Um, if you are uh, on the business page and you want to be more of the central conversation, come over to the Old Souls and Seekers group. That's where the, the majority of the, the magic happens. Um, and if you're watching on any other platforms, hello, we can we can see your chats wherever you're coming from. Can't always see your names, though. <clears throat> All right, cool. So uh, we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite topic today, or perhaps your least favorite topic today. Depends on <laughs> what your relationship to it is, but we're going to be having a conversation about money. And uh, it's an important one because it's a, you know, a driving factor behind many of our lives and does make certain things available, um, obviously. And we want to just really get related to our patterns around it and what we can do to change those so we're not dealing with the same type of structural patterns in our lives around our finances and our uh, just our ability to create more abundance in our lives. Uh, before I dive in, just a few announcements. Um, if you're new to our community, whether you're watching this live or on a replay, um, most likely when you uh, got signed up with us, you also got registered for a 28 28 day meditation challenge. I don't really know why we call it a challenge, but people like challenges. Uh, <laughs> it's a 28 day um, retraining, really. And our, our meditations here are really not about quieting your mind or having you try to relax your body, although those will be um, natural symptoms of doing this work. Although we ask that you actually don't focus on those things at all. We remind people not to quiet their minds. Um, these are what we call act, what we call active healing meditations. And we're going to show you in these meditations, we're going to train you, not just show you, we're going to train you how to go into higher states of consciousness with relative ease. And then what are the practical uh, functions of doing that? How does that elicit a healing response from the body? So the most healing thing that Elon and I could ever do for anybody is we always remind our clients and students that we are never the ones doing the healing. We always want to point you back at the groundedness of your own awareness. That might not mean anything to you right now, but ultimately it's actually a very, very important uh, foundational thing that we have learned in, in training people is that it's, you know, you really want people to be related to their own power and their own sovereignty and their own system and recognize that, hey, you can come to Elon and me and ask us to fish for you all day long, but, you know, you want to become a competent fisherman so you can feed yourself all day long and that's and that's a, a way of saying that you want to be able to resource yourself and get to a state of a higher vibrational output to be grounded to experience well-being in your system and to actually have your nervous system retrain itself to feel safe okay this is not talked about nearly enough in healing and developmental circles about the importance of retraining the nervous system to actually feel safe to not be in a fight or flight or hyper reactivity because that ultimately leads to a lot of the, the problems and amalgamations that people have in their lives. And so we really, really want to cultivate safety in our experience and well-being in our system and reset the foundation from which we experience life. So if you do nothing else with us, right, like some of you guys put in applications with us, you don't have the finances to do it right now, you're upset about that, that we like charge for our programs and stuff like that. Here's here. This is why we developed this 28 day meditation thing is so that you can at the very least retrain yourself. And then later down the road, later down the road, if you want to go from just being a person who's a student, you want to actually become a practitioner and a master of this type of work. And, and I would urge you to do that because it's life changing when you become that. Um, you still have some training that you can take home with you that's wildly valuable and you don't have to go very far 
down the newsfeed in this group or reading the commentary uh, inside of the uh, members area where the 28 day meditation challenge is to see the type of value that people get from this type of work. Okay. And then of course we would love, love, love nothing more than to have you in our advanced programs. Uh, in fact, for those of you guys that, that don't know, we have a live event coming up on this Saturday and Sunday. These only happen, I don't know what, four or five times a year. So um, you definitely want to get in there, especially if you've never done our work before. And a lot of you guys who are already in our work, you're, you're of course, invited to be there. You know, you know how to get there, hopefully by now. If not, then reach out for support. But for those of you guys who are like new to the party, you're not really ready to make a big investment yet um, in terms of time and equity into a program. This is a great way for you to get started. You can go to intuitive mind dot live and i would recommend that you register as soon as possible because there's a six hour pre-training recorded pre-training and, and the, that we're going to give you immediately in a back office setting that you can start going through right now and they will actually prepare you better for the program and give you even more value so you get some training before you get in and then you we we pick up from there and so it's okay if you don't do the training but we highly recommend that you you get that in there so again intuitive mind live bro can you actually drop a link for them in there so elon will drop the link i think you can actually scan that qr code over there too if you can see it um, on the right hand side if you want to be taken there go look at the testimonials you know go look at all those things if you're like what is this event really about if you've never done anything in the energetic or awareness space there is probably not enough context in this world that we can give oh. you to express how powerful of an experience this is okay this is not more mental architecture. This is not more personal development, or they'll, we'll drip stuff in there about that, you know, about the psychological aspects and how this affects your, your biology and stuff like that and physiology. This is what most people have never done. Like if you've done a lot of personal development work, we call that the growing up path. You've probably done a lot of that. You probably understand about the mind and how it creates stories and how to change paradigms. And, and if you haven't done that, that's fine too. We have programs for that as well. And we're like, we're, you know, we, we run the gamut here. This program is strictly brings you to uh, awareness and energetic practices, which are more geared towards uh, a lineage and path that uh, we call the waking up path, right? So Eastern Eastern type of uh, work, Zen Buddhism, things like this are all more focused on the waking up work. Western psychological therapeutic type things, way more focused on the uh, growing up work. We do both here. Okay, that's why our work is so potent. Like if you're new to our community, and you're like, well, what, what are these guys talking about? What's so different about them? What, what's unique here? That's what's unique is we actually do both in our community. And as far as we can tell, there's no organization on earth right now that's doing both. Um, and that's why uh, putting these two aspects of these incredibly important lineages and paths together, um, bringing them together and teaching people how to not just set the foundation of their mind, but also get into their, their spiritual bodies, energetic bodies, and, and starting to do that work for a lot of people. Most people, I would say, it's probably one of the most eye-opening experiences of their entire lives and gives access to something radically different in terms of their capacity to be with the things that are going on in their lives and then ultimately actually create healing, um, not just learning how to manage and cope what's happening better, but literally resolve it all together. Okay. So, uh, intuitive mind live again, it's coming up really, really soon. Um, we did a promo all weekend. So, you know, if you missed that, then you can still buy a ticket. Um, but yeah, we would love to have you. We promise you it's going to be an experience of a lifetime for you and people who come. I mean, it's, it's probably one of our favorite things to do because we get to spend the most amount of time with you guys. As I think like roughly 12 hours of training from Elon and myself, and it's for $444. Okay. I promise you there is no other experience, not even close that Elon and I offer that you can come spend that much time with us under any pretense other than this weekend. Okay. Like, um, so it's a really, really good experience. Um, last thing I'll say, and then we'll jump into the money conversation. Last thing is, uh, again, if you are somebody who's newer to our community, or you've been looking at, well, you know, how do I actually have a conversation with these guys about their programs? Uh, what are the different options that they have here? We This is not stuff we, we openly promote even on our own website, what our programs are, because they're so intimate and there's a lot of different ways to get in there and customize your experience. So it would be confusing 
to just be like, here it all is, pick one. You know, it'd be like giving you a, you ever been to the Cheesecake Factory when they hand you the menu and you spend the next 25 minutes of your life relegating, flipping between sandwiches and burgers and pasta and cheesecakes and trying to figure out what the right thing <laughs> is. Like that's the kind of experience it just overwhelms the system. So we have consultants uh, who are not just quote salespeople, but are people who are do this work ongoingly, some of which have been around a seven or eight years doing this type of work in different facets. And so those people can help you figure out based on the time, the time you have, the equity you want to put in, your level of commitment, you know, or are you just somebody who just wants to be like a weekend warrior? Or are you like, I want to master this, or you're a coach who wants to learn these things and be able to charge more for your services? Are you a high net worth individual? Are you somebody who's really struggling financially right now, right? Like we have so many people and so many different types of life experiences. And so what we've what we've attempted to do, and we're always trying to do it better, is give pathways for everybody in every situation and, and in every level of commitment that you might have. Okay, so the best thing to do is to have a conversation with those people. They'll ask you for a short, uh, short self-assessment so they can find out more about you and you guys are not wasting time answering a, you know, a bunch of questions. Just like going to a doctor's office, right? You're like, why do you fill out the form? So the doctor can like sit down with you, look at your form and be like, all right, how do I help you? And you can get down to brass tacks. Like if we did all that on a call, you'd be on a call for two hours with every person and that's may not be useful. So um, fill that out, have a conversation, see if it's the right fit for you. We have a bunch of payment and financing options if, if you're struggling right now financially. And so we've done a lot of things here to try to support uh, the community wherever you might be. <laughs> Announcements. <laughs> that was a mouthful. mouthful. Yeah. I um I would just say do whatever whatever in your power to make it to this event. Oh yeah. And I just want to say the the booking link is above your head, soulsandseekers.com forward slash book. Uh and on that page I think there's some some fun video or testimonials or something there. And that's the thing, like you'll see on all our pages, we swarm them. With testimonials, I looked over the last five years, Elon and I, our programs have an under 2% refund rate. And it was 0.19 last time I checked. And the reason the refund rate is so low is because this work works. Okay. We know it works. It's proven to work. We've done it with thousands of people. And the reason it works is not because we, Elon and I have devised or figured out anything special here. It's because what we're teaching is is human nature. We're, we're teaching about universal principles and truths that are timeless. You know, these programs will be as beneficial today as they would be 200 years from now. Like, you know, that that aspect, these spiritual principles, these things about human development. Of course, Elon and I are always learning more in our own development because we're always working more on our stuff. We're always working with more people. It's always revealing more truths. And so these programs are only getting better over time. Our delivery of them only get better over time. And we've been doing this for a combined 36 years. All right. So I just want you to imagine going to like a doctor who's been doing surgery, the same surgery for 18 years. Okay. Or whatever practice you might be in playing an instrument for 18 years, 20 years, nonstop. That's, that's what we offer here. And again, Elon and I are not the ones doing the healing. We're simply guides to your own divinity or guides to your own awareness. We are going to point you to the things that someone long ago pointed to us for. And then we've had a lot of experience in that particular space so we can see it from a lot of different angles and perceptions. And so there's really like almost nothing that Elon and I haven't dealt with, with another human being in this context at this time. So whatever you're dealing with, right. You're dealing with that's your life circumstances. And we can tell you that what's underneath all that are the patterns that are creating and bringing that circumstance into your life. Chances are, and we're going to talk about money, right? So we can start applying it to this area of life. Chances are, if you don't have some kind of internal intervention about your relationship with money, and I want you to start considering this as we talk about it right now, is like, what what was happening at home around money? You know, like me and Elon, we grew up in a very poor immigrant family. We moved here from Israel in 1989. Our parents barely made $1,600 a month for a family of four. Right? I remember we had a little calendar on the wall where my mom would write down like every dollar that we spent um, because they had to make sure that they had enough money for rent at the end of the month. Now, I don't ever remember thinking we were poor. I don't ever remember feeling particularly poor. However, looking back at it, I was like, oh, okay, that was interesting. Like, you know, the child picks up what's in the home. And today, when there are certain financial struggles that I continue to have in my life, 
because I realized my parents taught me nothing about money. <laughs> like, you know, and, and so I've gone and made a lot of the same mistakes that I probably didn't need to make in order to learn those lessons over time. And I've made them at a probably a grander scale than my parents had to make them because I've been in a fortunate position to uh, earn larger sums of money over the last 12 years. Trust me, it doesn't feel good when that stuff happens. Uh, and I've had to learn that. I've also had to learn about the the fear in my system and the terror that there is around money and all these different things. And then like, how does that relationship ultimately put me into situations in my life where either I'm sabotaging it or that money leaves for a particular reason, or there's discomfort in my system about a certain amount of money or, you know, a certain level of service that I might be providing. And these are the edges that all of us have in, inside of our systems that relegate us to staying in a certain threshold of what's okay and feels safe for our system, whether it's having very little or, or not having enough, right? Or, or, or sometimes when you have too much, the system will sabotage and get rid of it. And so these are all the things that we want to start having conversations about. Yeah, I was I was actually at an event um, <clears throat> this past weekend, and it was it was magnificent. It was really huge, and it had all these vendors around wellness. Some were just selling, you know, shirts and clothing and crystals and tinctures of this and tinctures of that, all the things that you would expect at like a you know a wellness uh, thing. And then there's also practitioners. So people who are leading retreats and meditation practitioners and sound healing practitioners and yoga practitioners, etc. And I met this one lady who did a breathwork session. We really kind of hit it off. And um, in talking, I had suggested to her, I was like, you know, I'd love to have a conversation after this and just see if we can collaborate. I told her a little about what, what we do. And she was like, oh my God, I'd love to work with you. And put you on our board and da 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 da. And um, in the conversation, she said something very interesting to me. She said, I've made a concerted effort because of the transformation that I've had, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, to only deal with people in this space who can operate both from the left and right brain. Mm -hmm. And she said, to me that for years she started doing breath work like 25 years ago i mean right but made no money at all till the last like maybe six or seven years and she said for about 18 years what i struggled with was this notion that like i'm teaching something that is this holistic thing and it's not about money and you know all that kind of nonsense that that people in the spiritual world uh try to make themselves believe and she's like and i was basically like a starving teacher i couldn't pay for anything i couldn't do anything etc and then i just flipped it and i realized that the only way to add value in the world is to have resource so that i can in fact go out there and create the change that I want. Mm -hmm. Because whether you guys want to believe it or not, money today, not always, but in this time frame that we're in right now, is the resource that moves everything. Period, full stop. Like, I don't care what, name, name an industry, where the most money is, that is where that industry is moving, right? Like, and so to, to sit on the sidelines and, and think that, oh, you know, I, I don't need it or blah, 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 like bullshit. It, do you want to make a difference in this world? You know, and, I, and we just had this conversation with our coaches. Like if you're a coach, one of your core things is that you want to make a difference. You can't turn it off. You can't, you can't, can't shut it down. It just is who you are. And how are you going to make more of a difference when you're resourced or under-resourced? Think about even from health. How can you take care of other people in your life? When you're sick and depleted or when you feel energized and healthy? Money is the same exact thing, right? Like there's an energy to money. And for me, what I realized is I would much rather money be in my hands than the hands of, you know, a masochistic, misogynist, 
whatever CEO who's just like in it for themselves, right? Like I'd much rather have those millions and billions in my possession to be able to put out into the world in the way that I know will actually move this planet and humanity into its next iteration. So if I sat there and was like, oh, well, I'm in this holistic wellness space. So I don't really, you know, like I'm not about money, like bullshit. Bullshit. How many of you guys, and I know there's many of you here, I don't know if here right at this moment, but how many of you guys have wanted to do our programs, whichever version, level one, two, or three, and the only thing that has stopped you from moving forward with doing our program is money. Like if you had it right now, you'd be like, oh my God, I'd, I'd be absolutely in one of those programs. But money. And so this thing of money limits us <clears throat> in one way, shape or form. It either limits us or it creates massive opportunity for what it is that we want. Now, here's the, the crux of this. When people struggle with money, they are in a waiting game for their life and their circumstance to miraculously unfold so that they can now do all of those things that they put on the back burner because of money. How many of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's like, I would love to do this thing, but da, da 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 And you know what? Like someday I will. Like someday I'm going to have this miraculous job. Someday this, you know, the, the, my house is going to sell or whatever, right? Like, and you just live in this constant path of waiting for someday to happen. And if you've had that going on, and my guess is based on your comments, that this is not something that I'm, you're just becoming aware of. Maybe like the way I phrase it makes you aware of it, but like this has been something that's been going on in your life for a very, very, very long time. <laughs> I get out of my head. And the, Wayne Dyer said this line, and I say it all the time. He said, people live in a world of I'll believe it when I see it. He said, unfortunately for those people, the world doesn't operate that way. The universal law does not operate that way. And so what people do is they sit on the sidelines and they wait for their circumstances to miraculously unfold. And then they add all this hope and they buy lottery tickets and they're doing this and they're doing that. Meanwhile, all these dreams that they've had and all these things that they wanted to do, just keep putting back burner, back burner, back. I'll get there someday. I'll get there someday. I'll get there someday. One of our teachers always used to say, there's, as far as I know, there's only a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. He goes, but if I wake up on a someday, I know all this incredible shit is going to happen all over the world. I just haven't gotten to that day yet. And he was, at, you know, it's, it's a joke, but like, that's where people live. They live in this someday reality. <clears throat> so Wayne Dyer was saying that people think that they live in a world of, I'll believe it when I see it. But the, the reverse of that is true, which is you will only ever see it if you believe it. Now, I'm going to add another piece to that, which I think he left out, because it's not about just sitting there and going like, I believe, I believe, I believe, like, it's not that. That doesn't do shit. That's a piece. And then what needs to happen is you need to take action. And when it comes to money, the action that one needs to take is always, and I repeat, always going to scare the ever loving shit out of you. It is going to make you feel like you're choking and about to die in that very moment. That's the action. And I really want you to sit with that. Like life is going to put you to this place where you're going to want something 
And all the same stories. I can't do it. I don't have money. Maybe someday. But all this shit's going to come up. And one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to buy that story or you're going to take action that is radically different than any action that you've ever taken. And in the moment, like when you're signing the credit card receipt or the contract or you're putting your information in online, you got to push that button. Everything inside of you is going to quake and shake and make you run the other way. And you're not going to be able to breathe. And your stomach's going to feel like you're fucking jumping out of an airplane. And it's going to feel awful. Awful. And some of you are going to go like, well, maybe I'm not supposed to do this because I, I just, I, I feel so sick. Like maybe this is a sign. <laughs> And I just want to point to that that's the same voice that has kept you from doing shit all this time. It's like, no, because inside, if you've ever seen that movie Inside Out, like there's that big switchboard with like all the buttons that they can press. This thing in there that doesn't want you to take this risk is literally pushing every sequence that it knows it can to make you run the other way. Because where you are is safe and you'll survive and it's okay. When you say like, nope, I'm done with that. I'm going in this direction. Everything inside is going to want you to stop. It's just going to pull you in every which way instead of that way. That one action, that one decisive action of noticing all this stuff happen and still saying, you know what? Fuck it. I'm no longer going to be stopped by my conversation around money. That one single thing can shift it all around. Because that one motion sends a new energetic frequency in the universe and you step out of that world of, I'll believe it when I see it, to I will see it when I believe it. And from that energy plus that action, you have now set a completely different wheel in motion. Now, just to be clear, that doesn't mean that some fairy comes in the middle of the night, sticks a wad of cash under your pillow, right? Like there's no tooth fairy coming when you take this action. <laughs> but what there is, is a complete shift in the paradigm in which you live. Because you switch into this place of, I deserve this. I'm going to give this to myself. And I know that the universe will support me because this feels in my heart and soul's alignment. And if it truly is, like, it will be so. So I'm going to share with you just like a really quick story of timing of these things because it's, it's, it's sometimes... People are like, well, when does it happen? I was like, I don't fucking know. Like my life is different than your life. It's going to happen for you as, it, you know, as it's supposed to happen for you. I was 26 years old and uh, I found this ridiculous house, like ridiculous house in New York. And I walked into this house and I was like, oh my God, it's like the most ridiculous, amazing house. And I tried to convince Guy me, my friend, Ben, and at the time, Fanny, we had just started dating. I mean, we were like dating for, I don't know, three months or whatever to all buy this house together. Cause it was huge. It was like five bedrooms, six bedrooms, big ass house. Like, and, uh, so my friend came and he was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. It's kind of out of the city. I don't want to do it. Blah, blah, blah. And then Things with Fanny and I got a little more serious and we realized that it would be weird to have like Guy be a part of the house. And so anyway, I basically looked at mine and, and Fanny's finances together and I kind of did some rough math and I was like, look, we may be able to make it work. Like we may be able to make it work financially. Maybe not. But in my head, I was like, all right, there's only one way to find out. I looked at her. I was like, would you want to live here? She's like, yes. I was like, all right, I'm all in on this house. I was like, let's take a step. So I started contacting banks. I started putting in information, all that stuff. Lo and behold, we get approved for a mortgage. We close this house. Now, the entire time in my head, I'm thinking, 
And by the way, I was doing like all the, this was when the secret was out. And I'm like writing a hundred times on a piece of paper, Elon Furman, 35 Fieldstone Way, New City, New York. Like I'm writing the address over and over and over. Like this is my house, right? Um, so anyway, we get the mortgage and we start making payments and we're living. And in my head, I'm like, listen, if, if the house is meant to be ours, it will work out. It's going it, to, you know, it'll show itself to us. And if we don't get accepted or for whatever reason, like it wasn't supposed to be our house in the first place. Fast forward, we're living in the house. We've been there for two years, three years, something like that. Two years. I lose everything. 2010, Guy and I both lose everything, but I lose everything and my house goes into foreclosure. Okay. So now I'm in this struggle of, I don't know at what point in what day someone's coming to my house to be like, uh, get your shit and get out. Like you don't own this house anymore. I don't know like that any day. So I wake up every day and I'm like, is this going? And in the back of my head, I kept having this thing. I was like, look, we, we got the house for a reason. If the only time that we were supposed to be in this house was these two years, then I had an amazing time having this house. And if it's now meant to go to somebody else, like it's going to go to somebody else. And if it's meant to stay mine, it will be mine. So we're going, obviously the whole world economically collapsed, right? So I'm going through this process with, with the banks and every three months, every three to four months, Bank of America, who was, who was the, the holder of the note, every three to four months, they would put a new agent on my file and every three to four. So meanwhile, I'm not paying any, like I'm not paying anything, no taxes, no mortgage. And every three to four months, they put in this new agent and they start the entire process of getting all this information about the hardship from the beginning. Literally like, like as if I'd never sent anything in. This went on at least five or six separate times. I lived in this house for close to two and a half years without paying a dime, without paying a dime. And the entire time I'm like, at some point someone's gonna come and take the house. But I, I kept saying like, if it's meant to be ours, it will, it will just be ours. If it's not, it's not. They take, so, so they end up selling our loan to this new company, to this new servicer. I get someone on the phone, this new servicer. Within two weeks, they send us a letter and they say, here's what we're willing to do. They removed nearly, it was like $660,000, $670,000 in principal and penalties that we had accrued over that two and a half year span of not paying a single dime. Removed it, wiped it out, gone. We will remove this. They removed our second mortgage, they removed all these penalties. They brought it down to this and offered us a 40 year, 2% interest loan and this would all go into ink, like this would be our new loan if we're able to make six payments in a row. Like, like once we make six of the, the new monthly payments, then everything goes into plan, da, 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 da. Here's the crazy part. Guy and I, during this time that the house is in foreclosure, we're building a business, okay? We weren't making any money. I mean, we were making money, but like not really making money. And any money that we were making, we were just pouring back into the business to, to, to grow the business. And so other than like basic food necessities, like we weren't pulling any money out of the business. That month was the first month that we actually created enough income where we were like, hey, we're gonna pay ourselves. <laughs> that was the first month. And then I get that letter. So if that letter had come six months earlier, we wouldn't have been able to make those six payments. And because of that happening, so that, that now, you know, fast forward like three years. So that was whatever it was, I think like 20, let's say 2013, roughly. 
because of the equity that we were gifted in that house, we were able to sell that house and take that equity, which we wouldn't have had, to then buy this current house that we have here in Florida. And I'm sharing, so this is like, I'm giving you like the, the whatever, the 15 year you know, outline of this. But all of that came from something inside that said, I want this, like, I want this, I deserve this. And everything inside of me, like, are you fucking kidding me? There's no, you're 26 years old. There's no way you can afford this, blah, 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 blah. And me saying, you know what? I hear all that and I'm going to take a step in this direction. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to trust that whatever's supposed to happen is going to happen as long as I do it. And again, I did that and it wasn't all gumdrops and rainbows, right? Like there was all this hardship and all that stuff. But even in those moments, that all those crazy hardships that I went through, was the blessing that allowed us to have that lower payment and allowed us equity to help us be here today. I don't know what your life thing is supposed to be. I don't. I can't predict it. it I've coached thousands of people. Each person is different. What I can tell you is if you keep sitting on the sidelines and thinking that one day, someday, this will all work out and you're going to have this red carpet rolled out in front of you and they're going to be like, here you go. Now you can do all those things that you've put on the back burner for the last four decades. It's not fucking happening. Mm -hmm. It's just not. The only way out of the hamster wheel that you're on when it comes to money is you get to take some decisive ass action. And I cannot tell you how many stories I have of people register because they stretch for our level two or level three program, right? And on that stretch, like two, three days later, they send me these amazing messages like, you won't believe what happened. You know, I got a huge tax refund and is paying for the program or I just got like five new jobs or five new clients or my boss gave me a raise or whatever it is. And I'm, I'm never in disbelief because I know how this works. I also know how much courage it takes to take that first action. And I don't care whether it's $500, $5,000 or $50,000, whatever your edge is, if you want expansion inside the world of money, you're going to have to have that moment where everything inside you can go, I'm gonna, this is killing me, I can't do it. And you can move anyway. And that's it. That's, it, it, it's as simple of a thing as I can tell you. And I get that it's not an easy thing to do, right? Like climbing Mount Everest is simple, not easy. You put one foot in front of the other, you make it to the top. It's fucking not easy. This if this is a struggle for you, is not supposed to be easy. <laughs> it's just not supposed to. Like, they don't come knocking on your door and be like, here's that wad of cash that you've been waiting for all these decades. You ready to go do all those things? No. It's just not how it goes. Not getting a wad of cash? No. Fuck. No. Yeah, I mean... I. I wholeheartedly agree. And I love that story. And I think you should tell that story more often. Like, I don't think I've ever actually heard you say that story from that perspective. I don't, think I, I don't know that I've ever actually shared that story in quite that same way. Oh, not in that way before. I've never heard it that way before. Yeah. That, was, that, was, that was cool to, to hear it that way. And yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like I, there's a show right now on uh, Netflix, um, not how to get rich. Maybe it is how to get rich with Ramit something or other. It's a cute show. And uh First of all, you know, the, the, certainly in America, and I imagine this goes worldwide, right? There's a, an emphasis on a lack of financial education in our culture. That seems to be by design. And, and certainly in America, right, the, the, everything is geared more towards business, building a business than being an employee. You get pretty screwed when, when you're employed. Um, and there's a lot of benefits to growing a business. But at the same time, you're also taking an immense amount of risk as a business owner, right, on every single day and, and creating things in this world and it could blow up in your face and many times for Elon and I over the last 12 years of having this company. So it has. 
Uh, and I could tell you even in the current iteration of our company, like our company has been around for 12 years in June. So we're about a month away from our 12, 12 year anniversary, which is crazy all in its own right. Uh, bat mitzvah. And, bar, <laughs> bat, bat mitzvah. Bat mitzvah. That's what yeah. I said. Uh, and then, and then in 2017, Elon and I pivoted pretty hard with our organization. Up until then, we were doing uh, business development coaching, marketing and sales coaching, and then like some light personal development coaching. And we did that for seven years as this organization. We had uh, we had affiliate relationships worth millions of dollars. We left that all behind. Very scary, very risky, right? Because we always knew that the whole reason we got online in the first place was to do what we're doing right now is to iterate people to, to transformational coaching, to performance-based, how do you increase your performance in life? How do you heal and resolve things? How do you become a better communicator? How do you have relationships that work? How do you get your health in order, right? Like things are, that truly fucking matter in this life. And that as a whole, at this level of society seems that we're completely lacking in that education completely. When we did that, Elena and I had quite a bit of financial resource at that time. So we dumped it all into this company, built a brand. We paid for the best copywriters. Like, you have no idea. And we're like, oh, in a month from now, we're going to have all this business. Didn't happen. 2017 wasn't, wasn't our eighth year anniversary. It was our zero year anniversary of what we just started to do again. And if, you, and if you've ever heard of people being overnight successes, it usually took them about 10 years to get there. And I have now met a lot of people who are very successful. I mean, like billion dollar businesses and everyone across the board is like 10 years took 10 years to get this overnight success, to make all the mistakes. And so for us, it's like we've been in this company for 12 years. I was like, well, we've been doing it for 12, not not quite there yet. But I realized that we've really only been doing this for about five years now again. And I could tell you that we're only just starting to see that stability again in our organization, you know, over, over these last few months and year and stuff like that, because there's so much stuff that you cannot anticipate that's going to happen on these journeys. And so I say that to you. Because we keep throwing ourselves into that ring over and over again, where it's really, really uncomfortable. When it, but, but it's not about the discomfort, and that's kind of the point of doing this work: is that life never quite gets fully comfortable. There's always something coming, even if you have all the resources in the world, even if you have money. There are stuff that is out of your control: health issues, relationships that can go awry, people that get upset at you, accidents that can happen. All sorts of stuff that none of us can predict. And so like money is not going to solve your problems. It certainly does open up opportunities. It certainly makes making certain choices in life significantly easier. But let's say you have been dealing with the same issue around money since you were very young. And I and I brought up the Ramit show because what it gave me insight into is like, wow, like I thought I like financial education and I have a finance and economics degree. They taught me nothing about money, P.S., I don't, they were giving me like math equations and how to do foreign exchange things that banks do automatically. But for some reason, I had to sit there with the calculator and figure out what's the US dollar worth to the British pound. Like, how did that help me with anything? I got one piece of sound advice my entire college career. I had one and this wasn't even part of the curriculum. It was a it was a tax guy that said, if there's one piece of advice I can give you is go start a Roth IRA as, as early as possible. And I didn't listen to him and I should have because I would have compounded my money a lot more. The best sound advice that he gave that for free. The other $160,000 that I paid for, I learned nothing at all about money. I, I'm having to learn about money now as a business owner because I made a lot of bad choices with money relegated to the programming I have about money for my family, which had no financial education at all. And so I imagine a lot of you guys are in the same boat. And so I'm telling you the same thing is that something along the way you have to make a choice for yourself and you have to get that people make fucking terrible investment decisions in their lives and i don't mean like putting money in the stock market i mean like they go buy glasses they don't need so they can match the shoes that they got yesterday they buy they buy a cell phone because the last one is 12 months old and they buy a new one for a thousand dollars that they don't have they go take a new car lease they go into a mortgage that they can't afford Again, not because you're you're stupid in any way, because literally people didn't sit you down how to do simple budgeting math and figure out what you can and cannot afford in this life. And so we end up living in debt. And then the one thing that truly makes a qualitative difference in the way that you experience your life is an investment in your own education and an investment on how to feel safety and well-being in your system so that when the challenges come, you don't freak out and make terrible decisions because that's what happens for most people. They make decisions from a reactivity 
and they can't respond to what's happening in their life. And I'm as guilty as that as anybody for a very, very long period of my life. It's taken me a long time to see those patterns as they're coming and be like, whoa, okay, if I react here, I already know how that's going to go. I'm going to make this bad decision. I'm going to end up in this bad situation. I'm going to try to fix this thing. It's going to go worse. Like, you know, I've, I've gone through enough iterations like that. And so you got to choose for yourself. What the hell are you investing into? Mm. The only investment that I can tell in this lifetime so far that I have made that has not let me down and that continues to pay off and give me a return on investment is the is my my self-realization. Everything else at every level of my life at some point in time has created significantly more hardship in my life. The only thing that eases that, that has made my life better and helped me transform everything in my life is my investment in myself. Now, you can pick a lot of paths to mastery in this world. You really can. And I, and I, and I hope that you do in something, anything, instrument, music, art, dance, uh, parenthood, your health. I don't care. Pick a, pick a lane and get frenetically good at that thing. The reason that we're so passionate about this, because spirituality is your, is your inner perspective of how you're experiencing the world. That's what, that's what self-realization is. You realize from within and then it changes what you see out and how you interact with what you see out. So it doesn't really matter what else you do in your life. The foundation, right? Like Elon and I, Elon is hardcore tennis way more than I am. But there again, another good show on uh, on uh, Netflix right now is a show called Breaking Point, right? Or Breakpoint? Breakpoint. Breakpoint. On uh, and it's like the same people who do a bunch of different sport documentaries on Netflix, which are excellent. But you see these people at the top of their game. I mean, top ten in the world, right? And the difference between a high performer on the court, like a number one and a number three, the gap is still huge. Like I watched it again yesterday with my son. There's the number nine guy in the world who's a young kid, and there's Rafa and Nadal who is like 110 matches on clay courts, has lost three. This kid took him to a fifth set. He was only the third person that ever did that, right? And he's number nine, he's number one. And the gap between them, massive. Yeah. Massive. Then he, And then he goes into the finals, and the guy he plays who's number three or something like that in the world, it does even worse. Rafa just wipes the court with him, and it was like an embarrassing loss. Huge gap, Right. And so the only difference between their two is their ability to respond on the court. It's not that the other guys aren't physically capable or don't have a great game or aren't able to hit the corner of the court or, you know, to play the chess match. But when you get frustrated and you become highly reactive, you lose your ability to respond in that moment in a way that's beneficial to your life. And that's what happens to most of us. We're living in a straight in a state of stress. And when we try to deal with money from that stressful place, we deal with it from a place of reactivity. And so we make impulsive decisions and we buy fast food or fast fashion thinking it's going to make us feel better. And maybe in that moment it does, but in the long run, there's no equitability there in terms of changing your life at all. I, I imagine, we've never done this, but I imagine for most people or for a lot of people, I don't, I, can't, I don't know what the numbers are here, so I might be completely blowing this out of my ass. But for a lot of people who tell us that they can't afford it, I, I almost... I'm certain if they would send us their finances and a profit and loss statement, I could easily find the money for them to invest in any of our programs and pay for them full stop on some kind of payment plan. I'm almost positive because I imagine that most people in that situation are not actually related to what's going on in their financial life. Because that's what yeah. I learned from watching that, that show on Netflix. My people are so disconnected and scared of money. And they're buying stuff and they own things in their lives. It's like, it's hard to imagine. And again, I'm, I'm taking this with a grain of salt. I'm sure there's a lot of people and very difficult financial hardships, right? And there may be something that you've never thought of that you can do, or you're stuck in a certain way of not seeing what you can do because of your patterns. So like we have seen over the years, people make incredible headway and their ability to create abundance in their life. And the reason they can do that is because their relationship to money changes. There's plenty of people who come to us and they're like, why do you charge for your programs? This should be free. Like Elon said, there's a certain resource that we play in this world for that we currently use as a measure of value. And a person who says that typically it doesn't, you know, has never been able to experience what it's like like to have equity in their life to make choices and so people will often transpose their experience on somebody else say well if i can't do it you can't do it mm -hmm. right 
And that's just kind of how it goes. So look, we can honor that there's lots of people in lots of different situations. It's why we have programs that start as little as $222. And we have our programs that start all the way to $25,000. Cause we're like, Hey, we're trying to give anybody who wants this work, at least a leg up in the same token. I can tell you this. If a person doesn't plunk down some money on the table, money is another way of seeing that of you saying, I'm going to vote for this and I'm going to agree to this. Right. The reason we all have the reason there's 33,000 SKUs on the grocery store of food. That's not really food is because people agree to it by paying for it. Every single dollar you put into some shitty food, you know, and then they get upset about the commercial farming or that this is happening in the world. It's like, yeah, that's because consumers are are paying for that and agreeing to it with every dollar that they put into it. If tomorrow everyone banned and stopped putting money into Frito-Lays, I promise you, they would stop making chips overnight and they would start getting, coming out with salads immediately. If people stop paying for food that was GMO and not organic and pesticides, I promise you, these companies would figure out how to make so much fucking organic food and be coming out the yin yang. Right? We vote for this stuff and we don't take responsibility for it. So you got to look at truly what's important to you in your life. And if you don't have the equity for it right now, then make a plan and get there. If it's important to you. And if it's not, throw this conversation away and pretend you never heard it. Right? Like you got to you gotta go after what's important to you. But like Elon said, that same mentor that told us about some one day, someday conversations. Uh, he also said, you blink once, you're 30. You blink twice, you're 60. Like I remember him when he was 55 years old ish, right? Now he's now he's into his late seventies. Went by real fucking fast. We were real young when we were around this guy. Like life goes by extraordinarily fast. Your your time and your energy are the most valuable resources that you have. You want to protect those things with great fervor, I hope. And if you're and if your energy is leaky, so is your money promise you that, right? There are so many things in this world today that you can do with a phone to educate yourself and give you skills and to work part-time jobs online that are very friendly and cost-effective and time-effective. I know because I hire those people left all over the place, right? There's so many opportunities today to do things that just 10, 20 years ago you couldn't do from the safety of your home or with, with reasonable little amount of effort if that's what you want to do. And again, I understand there's all sorts of situations here I'm not taking into account. I can't possibly understand all the challenges you have in your life. We all have them in our own way. So, you know, this is hopefully a, a little bit of a kick in the butt for some of you guys that really want to do this work and also for you guys to understand, like, Elon and I, and I can never call us a master because you know, no single person can ever be a master of life, in my opinion, Right. However, we we put we have put our money and our time uh, where our where our mouth is. This is something we have done day in and day out for twenty years. When I try to learn something in my life, Elon again likes to do tennis. We, we think it's insane to do that thing without somebody who's in a state of mastery in that. Because you know they say practice makes perfect. That's not true. Perfect practice makes perfect. Bad practice makes very imperfect. Right? You can go learn how to play golf. Like I can go pick up a club right now and swing that thing all around and I can hit the ball and then continue to do that and create that habit in my system. But the ball is going to keep slicing to the right, no matter how hard I try, because I don't know the little things that make the ball fly 300 yards straight. But if I sat there with a golf pro who was like, by the way, you got to turn your hips a little bit. And I don't know anything about golf. So sorry, excuse the metaphor here, you know, and did all those things. I'm going to have to unlearn the bad habits before I learn the good habits. So practice didn't make perfect. Imperfect practice made me imperfectly practice. And so the reason you want to come work with somebody like us and invest your time and your money, hopefully into a program like this, is because you see that these two knuckleheads over here have invested an extraordinary amount of time in understanding the nuance of human development, psychology, energetics, healing. And we've learned a thing or two by working with a few thousand people. P.S. That same mentor that we keep talking about here eventually brought people into his home. He lives in one of the nicest nine bedroom homes in California that you will ever see. He owned 54 different dental offices, a very successful human being. And eventually he rented for fruit. No, he rented for people who are in transition in their lives, homes in his house, even if they were ill in some way, like stage four cancer, and he would take care of everything for them. 
take him to the doctor, um, you know, bring him to appointments. Like that's what he did with his life. This is a, a heavily service oriented human being, a beautiful human being. His name is Paul. He's incredible. And I asked him, I said, so what have you learned doing that? Cause I used to sit with him, uh, even after I moved to California, I would see him once or twice a year. We'd have, we catch up and chat. And I even uh, went to his house one time and cooked Passover dinner for 12 non-Jewish people, which they thought was hilarious. And then I sang all the songs for them and it was like this whole novel experience for them. Um, and I said, what do you learn? He goes, well, he goes, um, the guy who graduates 400th in this class and the guy, and the guy who graduates first in this class are both called doctors. He goes, you don't want to go to the guy who graduated 400th in this class. You want to find the guy who graduated first in this class. And so, you know, when people go to doctors, they give away their autonomy often. If you're going to get surgery done, if it's appropriate, you may want to ask that guy, how many times have you done that surgery? I don't want the guy that did the surgery three times. I want the guy that did the surgery 10,000 times. He probably doesn't know everything about it, but he probably knows more than the guy who did it three times. So hopefully when you guys are here, if you are looking to invest in our work, like that's what there's here. We've done that surgery at least 10,000 times in different ways. And so that that's that's what the investment is for is to get that kind of guidance from that kind of person. You know, you don't go to a doctor, you go, I'm sick. And he's like, well, I can do the surgery. You're like, yeah, but I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> I want your expertise, but I don't want to pay for it. Okay, you, then you don't have to, but then you're not going to get the surgery. That, that's kind of how it is over here too. We, we, would love, we, we would love nothing more than to support people, but we need people who are committed to their craft. And one of the ways that you show us that you're committed is you invest in yourself. And, and the truth be told is I've never given anyone anything for free. And we've done that many times in the past before and see them do anything of value with it. Because when you give someone for free, they put no value on it at all. That's why we have to put value on our programs. So you understand that's what you're showing up for. This is the level of commitment that it takes. And I'm telling you that from a person who continuously invests in education and teachers at that level or higher, because I also understand that if I can go hire that teacher, but they're like, yeah, I'll do it for free. I'm still going to treat it like it's free and I'm not going to give it the equity and time and value that it actually deserves. When I pay for a program or someone's time, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 for a few hours of their time, I want to maximize the shit out of what I learn in that time. And so that's just the reality. That's just the way that, 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 that humans seem to be at this particular time in our history. And so that's, that's what equitable exchange is, right? And, and for you in your life, if, if you're not getting paid, what you are worth, then you got to change what the fuck you're doing. And you got to figure out a, a way to get paid what you're worth and what your expertise and your time and your equity and your consciousness is worth. And that will open up a lot of other opportunities for you, but you got to own that. No one's going to come to you and be like, all right, now's the time. And, and most employed people, just like Elon said, are waiting for that one day, someday thing to happen instead of maybe leaving that job and going to get something or learning a new skill and then, you know, moving into a field that could potentially open up a lot of different pathways in their life. So again, if you guys are interested, we have the event coming up. It's by far the least investment you can make. I'll even do you a, a super solid here. And even though we did the 50% uh, off cutoff yesterday, if you go to the intuitive mind live, we'll still offer you 50% off the ticket. You can do half 50. This is your best way to get a personal experience with Elon and myself. Uh, and if you want to uh, have a conversation with our team about the more advanced work, becoming a practitioner, a student, a master in this work, then go have a conversation with them so they can explain to you how everything works here, the different levels that we have, what the time and monetary investments would be, and then the different pathways we have of uh, getting you into these programs. Soulsandseekers.com forward slash book. And then uh, fill out that short assessment and then book on one of their calendars. Okay. All right, folks, we love you very much. Hope today's conversation made a difference for you. Uh, we'd love to get your feedback. And um, yeah, we'll see you here uh, next Tuesday and see those of you guys who are coming to the live event on Saturday and Sunday. Excited to uh, be with you. All right, everybody. Peace out. Hi, everyone.